Joining us again, Joe Vaklovic, as well as Mike North. Joe, bases has been phenomenal as of late. Is that a sign that even though we have seen these stronger commodity prices, that we are not seeing demand destruction yet? Yeah, the cash market's really fantastic in some areas of the country. It's it's not everywhere, but there's a lot of areas with a uh, positive corn basis in particular. And I think we'll find out a little bit more on June 30th about that situation. Uh, what are the grain stocks? Where are they located? Uh, why is it so tough for, say, an ethanol plant to procure uh, corn, even when uh, cash is you know $8 or better? It's really a phenomenal situation, and it is an underlying positive uh, in regard to the markets. Now, that doesn't mean that the board has to rally from here, but I'd, I'd say it's a supportive factor. Well, speaking of that strong basis, Mike, we're hearing some feed users like in Texas having to pay $3 over the board just to source grain. How wide is that situation and how many people is that impacting at this point? Well, the reality is, is you can essentially scope the situation by looking at the drought monitor map. We've been incredibly dry in the South and the West Feed is becoming more scarce. Water is already scarce. There's allocations in California uh, for usage. It's it's a difficult situation, and it's only getting worse because as these allocations for water uh, continue to shrink, uh, the capacity to grow crops. Uh, we're taking a, um, a feed pile that has already been running light and making it lighter. So. To keep your operations running and to keep animals fed, you are paying up, and it is a it's a pretty tough place to be right now. Uh, if you're in any of those droughty areas that have been droughty for the better part of two years, so when we talk about the road ahead, you know what's going on in the Midwest will have you know big ripple effects as you work further out into the West into the South, um, and you know that becomes further complicated by rail car shortage and labor shortage and all of the other, you know, peripheral things that wrap themselves around just pure supply discussions. Yeah, at the same time, Joe, you know, this week we're seeing some strong cash cattle trade. Uh, you know, does that have anything to do with the grain markets that we're seeing uh, or are there other factors that play there? I think the fundamentals of the cattle market are just uh really not that bad. You wouldn't know that by looking at the board and, and some of the activity that we've seen there this week. It's almost like you're, you're seeing similar things in, uh, say, the grain markets that you're seeing in the cattle market with this positive basis situation. Uh, there is speculative money and outside money that I think just wants no part of, of the long side of these markets. And if, if they're going to liquidate futures and the cash market stays strong, I, I guess that that could happen for a little while here you could see that that kind of a divergence between cash and the board just because there's outside money that wants out that doesn't necessarily mean the cash market has to fall apart um these are deliverable contracts in the case of you know corn and, and live cattle but it, it doesn't have to matter necessarily until you get a little bit closer to that delivery period or into those delivery periods you know mike you mentioned dairy producers in the west having trouble sourcing feed are you concerned at all that this talk about a recession that's really weighing heavily on the grain markets, do you think that could potentially be a major headwind for milk prices too? Over time, yes. Um, dairy has done very well uh, in recessionary times, often because as we've gone through them, people will trade down their proteins, if you will. They might not go out for a steak, but they may still order a pizza into the house. And, you know, the more cheese that we move, the more dairy that we move in those capacities, the better it is. Um, right now, the recessionary discussion around dairy is a concern. And when you look at ice cream sales, which have been dropping, which, you know, we consider that the luxury item uh, in the dairy case, if you will, um, that has been showing signs of, of, of recessionary pressure. People have been backing away from ice cream. And as we head towards summer, that is a concern. But there's some different elements at play with dairy on the supply side, as we've watched Europe back away from uh, dairy production growth to satisfy a new, um, let's call it environmentally friendly uh, direction in their, in their economy. And so as, as, we, um, as we talk about that, and you know, certainly that's a contestable uh, discussion, 
But as they take cows out of the picture, it opens doors for U.S. dairy to play a bigger role in export markets. And that's where we're finding uh, some strength and some opportunity as we go forward. Um, now, with world banks raising rates to get ahead of inflation, you know, broadly, that becomes a discussion now for us. But all the way around, um, you know, we're, we're, we're not getting to a point of fear in dairy uh, around that same discussion like we might be. Uh, on the grain side, as we've witnessed over the course of the last week. All right, Joe, bottom line, whether you're a seller of grain or a buyer of feed, what do you need to keep in mind right now? There's a tremendous amount of risk in both directions. Weather forecasts can turn on a dime and bring the markets along with them. At the same time, I think you've got a Federal Reserve and central banks that are essentially they're trying to induce a recession. They won't say that, but that's what they're trying to do. They need to reduce economic activity in order to reduce inflation. Um, they they don't even care if unemployment rises by one or two percent. I don't think at this point in time. Uh, so that you've got so many risks. I mean, is the recession the bigger thing or is the fact that we're short grain in some places the bigger thing? Is money flow the bigger thing or um, uh, do fundamentals and Ukraine and things along those lines went out. I really don't know. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, just try to have an idea of your risk profile, know where you stand. Um, if things work, lock them up because, you know, these these markets can move uh, dollars, dollars per bushel in grains in, in the course of a week. It's it's possible and it's in both directions. All right, Mike, Joe, thank you so much for joining us this weekend. Let's take a quick break and then we'll have much more right here on U.S. Farm Report.